everyone, it's me, Aaron, Professor Thorgy, your guide to all things geeky, and pardon the change in scenery, I'm still in the process of moving and setting up our new little recording studio that I have. Uh, so, in the meantime, forgive the giant wall of white all around me. Uh, wall of white was my nickname in high school, by the way. I was very fat. But, I have come to you today to talk to you about something very important. Our long national nightmare that lasted all of two weeks is finally over. Uh, okay, let's back up and let me tell you what I'm talking about. If you've been watching my channel for a while, then you know I've made a few videos about this Jim and the Holograms movie that's been coming out. And I was planning on going and seeing it because I had some opinions about those trailers. Shut. Shut the f*** up. So yeah, after talking all that smack, how on earth could I not go out there and see this terrible piece of crap? Surely it is my duty as a critic to put myself on the front line and actually witness this atrocity to cinema. Well, I'll tell you, on the weekend that this movie came out, I was busy preparing to move. And then on the weekend after that, I was in the process of moving. And if you guys have not heard the horror story that was my move, go ahead and click on that video. I know you might think, oh, that doesn't sound like something very interesting right now. Trust me, this was such a cluster fudge of a move, it was worthy of having its own video. And needless to say, this move, which was supposed to take two days and ended up taking an entire week, prevented me from seeing this movie a second time. So, last weekend, I was like, alright, fine, here we go. I am finally all set, I finally have some time cleared up, finally got a day off, I don't have to do anything. I am finally going to go and see this movie, and it wasn't playing anywhere. I checked every single theater in my state, I checked every theater in the next state over, and in the next state after that. I searched three states and could not find this movie playing anywhere, and then I got so desperate to review this piece of crap. I worked harder to find this thing than I have for like small indie films that I really want to see. I worked so hard for this, I actually, and I probably shouldn't be saying this, but I actually went to certain places that I know of where people sell, let's just say, versions of movies that aren't that legally recorded, and even they weren't selling it. Bootleggers were not selling this movie. That is how bad this film was, is that even the people out there who just sneak into theaters and record them on their phones were like, no, I'm an auteur, sir. How dare you imply that I would sully my merchandise with this film? Even they wouldn't put it out. So how is it possible? How on earth is it possible that an entire major motion picture disappeared from that many theaters across the entire country Overnight, like it was some mysterious merchant from an old Twilight Zone episode. Like, you walk out of the theater and you're just like, Oh my gosh, that was the worst movie I've ever seen. I can't believe that they were playing it. Oh, what movie was that? Oh, Jim and the Holograms. It's playing right over there. And then you turn and there's just a blank lot with a tumbleweed blowing through. And some old man comes up to you and goes, That movie theater shut down 50 years ago. But yes, getting back to my point, this movie was pulled from 2,417 theaters practically overnight. Like, as soon as those theaters had met their contractual obligation to show this movie, it was gone. And we have to talk about this because it actually has a lot of implications and it actually says a lot about what's going on in cinema these days. Uh, Plus, also, I promised you guys a Jim the Holograms review, and if I can't produce that, I'm at least going to talk about what a massive flop this is. Now, first thing that we have to talk about is the reception that this movie got from both fans and critics. Now, we already knew the fans' reaction to this. We knew that as soon as those trailers came out. I made a couple of videos about, and I have listened to you guys, I have heard from you Jim fans, and I made it clear in those videos that, yes, I wasn't a gym fan growing up, I never really got into it, it just wasn't my thing. However, I am a geek, and as a geek, 
I can tell when someone else's franchise is being screwed over, and man, those trailers let me know you were getting a raw deal on this one. So I tried to be there for you guys, and I tried to speak up for my gym brothers and sisters out there, and yeah, turns out that even the non-gym fans hated this film, because this thing right now has a 20% on Rotten Tomatoes, and I listen to a lot of critics out there, and I read a lot of reviews out there, because I like to try and see what other people think. I don't want to just go out there and say that my opinion is the best. I like to try and listen to what everyone else is saying. And here's the thing, 20%, that's one out of five. I have not read or heard one good review of this. I haven't even read or heard one not terrible review. Every single critic that I have listened to has said that this might be one of the worst films of the year. So I don't want to go out there and make accusations, but at 20%, that 20% walked out of that theater with a little change in their pocket. I guarantee you Universal Studios maybe didn't pay off some of these critics, but they whined and dined the hell out of them. They sent them into that theater with a lobster and a bottle of red wine right there. And they came out going, you know what? Yeah, that wasn't so bad. Hold on, I got a little bit of lobster here in my teeth. Mm. Oh, you know what? I could see that movie again. And I'm bringing up the critics now because I'm going to get back to that eventually. But let's talk about the actual opening weekend of this thing. All right. This movie is actually the second worst major release opening of all time. It opened in 2,413 theaters and it only made $1,375,000 that opening weekend, which comes out to an average per theater of $570. Okay, let's do the math on that. I don't know where you guys live, but where I live, a movie ticket is roughly $13, so just doing the math on that one, it comes out to about 60 people in every single theater throughout the entire weekend. I'm adjusting there to make up for the matinee prices being lower, but roughly 60 people in every single theater throughout three days. And as I said, it is the second worst release for a major motion picture. The only film to actually do worse than this was 2012's Oogie Loves and the Big Balloon Adventure. Oh, I'm sorry, have you not heard of Oogie Loves and the Big Balloon Adventure? Yeah, neither did anyone else. I mean, for God's sakes, look at this right here. Just look at that. That's the only thing that has ever done worse than Jim the Holograms. This monstrosity that they tried to sell the kids is the only thing that was actually worse than Jim the Holograms. Can we actually take that down? That's really starting to disturb me right now. Ew, get that out of here. Get out. But that's not all. It manages to get even worse for this movie because in its second weekend, it actually dropped 70%. Now, typically, you want your film to only drop 50% from week one to week two. This dropped 70%. And just realize that this thing made new stories with how bad it did in the theater. And typically, when you do that poorly, you're going to at least get in a couple of rubberneckers who just want to come by and be like, oh my god, I have to see how bad this is. You know, the kind of people who would stop and stare at a car accident? You would at least get that audience in there. And it still dropped 70%, and it only made $160 per theater. Okay, once again, just doing the math there real quick. Actually, you know what? I'm not going to do that math because it's just too sad. $160 per theater. Wow. So in the end, before it was pulled, after only two weeks, which, by the way, I just have to point out, Wii Loves and the Big Balloon Adventure lasted three weeks. I'm just going to leave that one on the table. But okay, so before it got pulled, after only two weeks, it only brought in $2,028,000. Now, of course, that is a bomb. Of course, that is a disgrace. But you know what makes this all the better? Is that this movie only had a budget of $5 million. Do you know how hard you have to try to tank 
with a budget of $5 million, I could make a movie about me just doing random stuff around my house, and it would still bring in $5 million. Coming this fall, one man, one thirst, one Snapple. Witness the film that Entertainment Weekly said makes me wonder if we should even keep making movies, but at least it's not Jim and the Holograms. Man Drink Snapple, the movie, coming this fall. Can Snapple go, Pat? Seriously, this has been in the fridge for a while. Anybody? Now, let's go ahead and talk about that $5 million, shall we? Alright, this film was made by Hasbro. And I understand Hasbro doesn't decide how much money gets spent, but they decide how much money they ask to be spent on this film. And I'm just going to bring up a couple of other Hasbro properties that they have turned into movies. Transformers, the first Transformers film had a budget of $150 million. G.I. Joe, the first G.I. Joe film had a budget of $175 million. Battleship, which we all remember what a massive flop and piece of crap that was, that had a budget of $209 million. The only other Hasbro property that only had a budget of $5 million was the Ouija board movie, which they made a Ouija board movie? Seriously, even I forgot about that one. But that had a budget of $5 million and, brother, that's a ghost story, okay? That is just a movie about five kids sitting around putting their hands on a little disc going, Are you moving it? Oh god, I think you're moving it. And then in the background you have like a curtain flail or something. That can get by on $5 million. But Jim and the Holograms had a budget of only $5 million? Okay, Jim involves holograms. It involves special, special effects. It involves you going out there and doing giant shows. It involves you doing giant musical numbers on huge stages to huge audiences and then going around the world on tours and having big mysteries and solving them. And they gave $5 million? For $5 million, you might be able to rent out one stadium for a night to do one show. That's it. And you gave it $5 million. Okay, I don't want to make any accusations against Hasbro. I don't want to put a label on anybody or accuse anybody of being something. But, uh, these are the properties that they gave a bunch of money to. This is the one they gave no money to. What do you think Hasbro thinks of its audiences? I don't know, Transformers, G.I. Joe, Battleship, you know, all the boy products. Oh yeah, $175 million. Jim, the one aimed at a female audience. Whomp! Five million. I'm just saying, those facts are pointing in a direction, Hasbro, and you might want to get in front of that news story and make it clear what the heck you were thinking. And I know, I know, Transformers, it's giant robots from space. Of course it's going to have a giant budget. I'm not saying it shouldn't have a giant budget. Maybe you should have another director who knows what to do with that budget, but still, it should have a giant budget. But Jim and the Holograms, with all that stuff that I just mentioned about it, Hasbro, you can't put another zero in there? But okay, this is what, this is the point I've been trying to build to, which is that if you're only going to put $5 million into it, then clearly you don't care. Clearly you don't. And ever since I made those Jim and the Holograms videos, I have seen the fan base for this. I have. I was never a part of that fan base, but I have seen the reaction and I see how much it means to them and how much they love it. And that's the great thing about being a geek, is that when you're a geek, you love something from the world of pop culture because it meant something to you, because it came to you in the right time in your life and it helped to shape you and it had such an impact on you and it is so important. And there are few things more frustrating to a geek than when that thing that they love is just dismissed by the people who own it, by the people who control it, by the people who just push it aside and they clearly don't care about it anymore. So Hasbro, if you don't care about it, and you're only willing to put up $5 million for this? All I'm saying is, I've seen Kickstarters go to higher amounts than that. So this is what I'm proposing. Let's find someone out there. Let's find a director and a writer who have a vision, 
who really care about Jimmy Mahalgram, who understand what it means, and it did make an impact on their life, and they have got a vision for their own film, let's find someone out there who actually cares, and then set up a Kickstarter for them. I would love it if that fan base that refused to go and see this horrible adaptation turned right around and went, oh no, 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 don't try and dismiss this. Don't try and say that the fan base just isn't there. We're here. And we are indeed willing to put up the money for this. But only if you get it right, and only if you understand it. Because that's what it means to be a geek. And I would love it if they turned around and actually successfully funded a Kickstarter, gave it more than $5 million, and they were actually able to turn around and make something great out of it. I'm not the one to run this Kickstarter because I can barely run this own channel. I mean, seriously, again, giant white wall here as a backdrop. But, I'm just saying, Hasbro, if you're up for it, I'm sure we can find someone who will run that Kickstarter. So yeah, that's a wonderful dream, isn't it? The idea of a fan-created Jim the Holograms movie. The idea of a major company out there realizing that they screwed up, and realizing that the fans could probably do it better, and just handing it over to them. It ain't gonna happen, but it's a nice dream to have. However, I'm not gonna end on that negative note. No, no, no. Because despite how badly you gym fans got screwed over, there are two positive sides to this story. The first positive side is that every single time that someone takes a property and massively screws it over, the studio itself always gets out there and someone from the studio always comes up front and goes, yeah, well, you know, the fans did seem to enjoy this part, but they always say it with that tone like, and it's their fault. It, with that tone of like, well, you know, we tried to make something for them and clearly they didn't appreciate it enough, so we're just going to go ahead with our vision that we had and maybe they'll enjoy that a bit better. For example, remember Green Lantern and how terrible of a film that was? And remember after it bombed at the theaters? The studio heads themselves came out and said, well, you know, we're going to go ahead with a sequel, but for the sequel, we're going to go with a much darker tone. We feel like the audiences will, will agree with that more. And as a Green Lantern fan, I remember staying up going, that's not what was wrong with that film. But uh, that's a rant for another day. But my point is that every single time that a movie like this tanks, the studio always gets out there and tries to save its ass by blaming the audience. I haven't seen that happen yet. I think that this film actually did so poorly and that people were so outspoken and outraged about those trailers and about the film itself. This is one of the first times I have ever actually seen a studio shut their mouths because they realize they don't have a leg to stand on. This is the first time in which there is no way to spin it that the studio did not screw up. Everybody knows this was the studio's fault Meaning, they might actually learn from this. Gym fans, you can go to bed and rest easy tonight knowing that unlike so many of us other geeks, this is one of the few times out there in which I can say that guy who ruined the thing that you love, he got canned. There is no way that at least three people in charge of this product did walk out the door with all their in a box. The person who ruined that thing that you love just went to the equivalent of movie jail. He's behind movie bars right now, and he's where he can't hurt anyone else. Rest easy tonight, gym fans. But the other thing that I want to point out, and the thing that should bring joy to all of us, and to all of us geeks out there who have had our properties ruined before, is that Pixels, Fantastic Four, Jim and the Holograms. I've been in this movie critic game for a while now. I have never seen this happen. This is the first year that I have been tracking films in which I have actually seen it happen where all the movies that the critics say are garbage actually bomb. I cannot name one movie this year that was critically panned that everyone saw and came out of going, oh my god, that's terrible, that succeeded. This is the one time in which the audiences finally listened and they actually went, hold on, wait a minute. 
Everyone's telling me that this is garbage. Maybe I shouldn't spend my $13 on that. The reason so many geeky properties always get screwed over when it comes to the movie adaptations of those properties, especially video game properties, so to all you video game fans out there who listen up to this one, the reason they always get screwed over is because the studios don't care. It's because they know that with all the money that has gone into these properties before and all the money that has come back from these properties before and with the size of the fan bases, they know that they can just look at that and go, well, clearly the fans will just buy anything with that name on there. We can just slap that name on anything and then the fans will roll in with all their money. This is the first year in which I have seen the fan bases look at this and go, I see what you're doing. There's no wizard here at all. There's just a little man behind a curtain. This is the first year in which I have seen those audiences wake up. It's beautiful to me. This is the first year when, you know what? Jay Sherman said it best. It's very simple. If you stop going to bad movies, they'll stop making bad movies. Uh-oh, the jig is up. Tell them you want stories about people, not a hundred million dollars of stunts and explosives. People, it's up to you. If the movie stinks, just don't go. Ugh. If, if the, the movie stinks, stinks just don't go. If the movie stinks, just don't go. What am I saying? Yes, this is the first year in which I have seen audiences actually realize there's an internet and you can look on it to find out information and you can see what people are saying about a movie and if the movie stinks, just don't go. Although I will say there's another Transformers film coming out next year, so that will be the ultimate test of whether or not this theory is true. But until then, I thank you guys for watching this video. As I said, I'm slowly getting everything at my new location set up, so I might be here against the giant white wall for a couple more episodes, but I hope you guys stick around until then. So again, thanks for watching everyone. If you missed those previous two Jim the Holograms trailer reactions I did, I'll post them at the end of this video. And if you want to see more from me, I do fun geeky stuff on this channel every single week. I talk about stuff from the world of comic books, video games, movies, anything like that. So if that sounds like something you want to check out, make sure you hit that subscribe button. You can also follow me on Tumblr and Twitter. I'll put the link to that in the descriptions down below. So again, thank you guys for checking out this video. I will see you on the next video. I just realized I'm wearing the exact same color shirt as my wall and the couch. If I green screen this thing, I would just be a floating head throughout this entire video. Maybe I should do that. That'd actually be kind of fun. Why am I still talking? I'm just gonna fade into my white wall here. Just go full camouflage. Just play the videos over me. Can you see me?